I will never forget sitting in the, under the black sky with a million stars, shaking. Because for the first time, I understood the love of God as I watched a Bedouin man kill a goat. And he walked there for me. And he was crucified at nine, and he died at three. I never know what to say. I'm just, you, and my rabbis would say, don't say anything, you nude Nick. This is a picture. And you know what's amazing to me? I don't think I told anyone here anything you didn't already know theologically. What makes this so different? have a thought or a question? Yes. First name. afternoon bless you awesome that's the death psalm every Jew wishes to die reciting the words of Psalm 22 and I'm going to show you this afternoon that that is exactly six of Jesus seven sayings come out of Psalm 22 he's choking out Psalm 22 so we'll get to that good question first name first name I'm sorry first name. Zach you're saying that you think Jesus um, up in heaven with uh, Abraham that promises to be with Abraham about um, the death that's what Jesus knew about that um, what about Genesis 3.15? What, what is that referring to? Okay. You're, you're correcting me. Let me say this more precisely. I should not have said, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I'll correct myself. I should not have said that was the first time Jesus knew he would die. What I should have said is Jesus in heaven watched his father sentence him to death. This is his sentence. Being God, he of course knew that at creation. But I think this is the point in history where, from a human point of view, Jesus watched it become official. That more precise? Thank you. That was a good, good comment. Yes, first name? Charity. Charity. Okay, um, let me answer that question, and then I, I want to take a break. You, you need a few minutes to um, catch your minds, and I want to shift to something very different. We've built now the footing walls. We're ready to start the building. Um, Orthodox Jews. I'm going to say one thing now and one later. To the Orthodox Jew, you still wait for God to suffer. It's still coming if Jesus isn't Messiah, wasn't Messiah. When the temple was destroyed, we had to come, they had to come up with a new way to ask God for forgiveness. The new way was to sacrifice yourself by obedience. Now, they don't believe you're saved by obedience, but obedience becomes what the animal blood was. It's your way of God saying, God, I've tried to obey you as my way of asking for your mercy. Paul writes, offer your bodies living sacrifices. And then he goes on to list some commandments. Same idea. Now, the question that you're also asking, tell me if I'm wrong, is why don't the Orthodox Jews see what appears to be so clear? That I'll address in a little bit different way this afternoon. I have 10 to 11. At 11 o'clock, I'd like to start again. Bless God for you. And um, so I'll see you then. What I'm going to do is our website is up at this point, so I'm going to give the students the website and they can peruse that and find whatever they want. That's even better. Right. Okay, question more personally. 
you move between Bedouin culture and Jewish culture, historically, mm -hmm. in my example. <coughs> Are those that overlapping, I, I, the examples of Bedouin, were those Bedouins Muslims that you stayed with? Yeah, religiously, yeah. Mm -hmm. So do they share <coughs> these rituals sure. that closely? Sure. Culturally, very close. Very Hospitality. Close. Uh, um, the shedding of blood. Yep, very, very close. You, you would say, this, this is the way we go, I do when we go to Israel. Yeah. If you want to know the patriarchal culture, you've got you to gotta live with the Bedouin. Right. If you want to know the culture of Israel in the, in the king's period, you have to be, live with the Palestinian. Uh, if you want to know the Jewish people from Jesus' time, you have to live with the Orthodox Jews. I see. Very good. Thanks. So, you bet. Hi, Josh. Well, maybe not simply. Um, last time we were here, I picked up the Our Father Abraham book. I read through it and had a couple of questions regarding the Passover week. And, um, we tend to think that Jesus was probably crucified. Um, I think when the when the Passover lambs were, from part of part of my understanding is that he was crucified when the Passover lambs were, which would have been probably what Friday. But let me show you something here that at least enters into the whole. What people forget, or maybe don't know, is that there are actually two Passover sacrifices. You get what, for lack of a better word some have called the national sacrifice. That's the one I just mentioned. That's at 9 and at 3 p.m. for all Jews, actually God-fearers and Gentiles who come in as well. That goes on every day. Then there's the family sacrifice. Now, if we assume that Passover is on Friday, in, in the day, the year Jesus died, these two would have been held on Friday. The meal is held at the beginning of the day. Right, of the day. The, the family sacrifice is at the beginning of the day. When is the beginning of Friday? Thursday. Thursday night. So I would argue the best schematic says Jesus did the Lord's Supper, Last Supper, Passover, during the family. I came out of the family sacrifice because he's teaching community. His death is on the national sacrifice because it's for everyone. And I think the mistake people make is they want to make this animal that's eaten in the Seder meal to be the one that Jesus died with. But I think God is doing something very different. I think God is saying, no, you're not going to die here because this is about community. And Jesus came to build community. You're going to die here because this is about a sacrifice for everyone. So I think that's the best. Now, not everybody agrees with that, but if you look at the Jewish point of view, if you look at David Flusser, for example, in his discussion of this, he makes this very strongly, that Christian debate is which of the two sacrifices. And because John seems to talk about this one, and Matthew, Mark, and Luke seems to talk about this one, there have been some who said, well, John was wrong. There have been others who said, nope, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are wrong. But I'm saying the better way to resolve the dilemma is to say there are two sacrifices. From a Jewish point of view, it fits perfect. Exactly. Plus, the picture then becomes profound in both ways. You talked about uh, Mike. Yeah. Uh, in your lecture about the coronation and all that, uh, about holding the final sacrifice in the Roman. Ah, f yeah. I'm so thinking you meant this morning. No, no. no. Uh, yes. The, going through the seven steps. Yes. Like the eight steps, yeah. Or eight. And talks about in 22 about being surrounded by the Lord. Does that have anything to do with that? 22. In Psalm 22. That's really interesting. See, so that, that's a great insight. That is definitely worth pursuing right now. I cannot think of anything I've ever come across, but that, that could be a real interesting insight. Let me, let me, leave me your email address. Let me just take a look at that and I'll, I'll have to think about it. I, I can't give you any more than that right now. Thank you, Mike.